story about the Jordanian coup or the alleged coup, uh, we might call it, that is uh, that's going on. It's kind of hit the news. It actually hit the news already. But a good friend of mine over in Israel had sent me the story a few days ago, and I hadn't reported it as of yet, mainly because I've been trying to dig out and find out what is really behind uh, this so-called coup, this alleged coup uh, that was by Hamza, Prince Hamza bin Hussein. And of course we do know that the Jordanian government has put him under house arrest. They've arrested other uh, people in his family uh, from what I've been hearing thus far. And this is all about that he is trying to overthrow the King of Jordan, King Abdullah, trying to overthrow him and take his place. Well, initially, I had uh, was curious of, as, as whether or not could Iran be behind this. Uh, you know, although Iran and Jordan do not get along very well either, uh, but I was just curious about that. And but uh, my Israeli uh, friend there said that no, he said it's an interesting observation, but no, they're not behind it. So I did a little bit more digging to see if I could find out uh, through other uh, friends that I know and tell circles there in the Middle East there to see if we could find out what really was going on. Well, I got to the bottom of it today and uh, it was very interesting. Now, I call it alleged coup because, as was pointed out to me, there has been no military officials that have been arrested as a part of this coup. No generals, no, no military officers that have been arrested. It's just been the prince uh, and, of course, and some family members. But there was a plan for him to become the of Jordan and, to, of course, to topple uh, King Abdullah in, in the process. But this was something that actually began last summer when President Trump was still in office. And what was going on was Prime Minister Netanyahu, he is the one behind this alleged coup uh, that is going on with uh, this Prince Hussein. And what I discovered was is that uh, Netanyahu who had promised the Saudis that they could have the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the control of the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. And this was part of trying to get uh, the Saudis to follow in the footsteps of the United Arab Emirates, making the ties with Israel, and of course, eventually, uh, see, they, they don't want you to know the truth of this story. Look at that, they're already trying to block us on I'm being able to tell you the story. Anyway, I don't know how much of that you missed because I'm, I'm looking at the road and not looking at the screen here. Uh, but anyway, Netanyahu was trying to get the Saudis to follow into the same uh, plan as the United Arab Emirates and the other countries, the other Arabic countries, making these ties with Israel as they build their new world order platform and bring these nations in the Middle East all under the sun. And as I mentioned, Netanyahu knew that they could get better cooperation with the Saudis on building their temple on the Temple Mount than they can with uh, with the Jordanian king. Uh, the Jordanian king is just not going to go along with that with that plan very well. So that was the plan, and of course uh, Hamza there, he Prince Hamza, he uh, said he would go along with it. He would have no problem with allowing the Saudis to get the Al Aqsa Mosque. And, uh, but he would have to become the he'd have to become the king of Jordan in order for this to be pulled off. Well, that's what they planned on doing. But then everything began to unravel. Well, a couple of reasons why. One, Trump didn't get reelected, so they don't have the support of Biden to continue forward with this uh, coup plan. And then what happens is uh, the Jordanians had uh, begun to realize that Prince Hamza was involved in this. They already had his phones tapped, everything, and they recorded the conversation that he had with none other than the Saudis about sending a plane in and getting him out of the country because the heat was on him that he was involved and that there was a plan with Israel to topple the King of Jordan, King of Dalla, and put in his place Hamza 
Ben Hussein as the new king of Jordan. Well, to top all that off, then I get another uh, email from a good friend of mine in Israel there saying that there was yet another guy involved in trying to rescue uh, the prince, Prince Hamza, and that was an Israeli living in Europe. His name is Ray Shaposhink. And uh, they, they say that he's not connected to, you know, Mossad or anything like that, but you know, who knows, right? But he also was going to try to rescue him, bring him back to Europe, let him live there with his family there. Who knows? Maybe that's the cover they're trying to give it in order to uh, protect the Saudis. Don't really know the answer to that, but I just find this kind of interesting. You do a little digging, wait a little bit, have a little patience, and you find out some very interesting things. Uh, another thing too, just to kind of uh, brief you guys on some things going on. Russia, I've gotten some uh, information that Russia has moved nuclear warheads into Spain. And I'm gonna be trying to update you probably tomorrow morning before I can update you on that story there. But uh, Russia has moved nuclear weapons there. Russia is saying they're not playing games with uh, President Biden. That if he doesn't back down, there could be a first strike scenario from the Russian side. Uh, well, you're talking about that. And we know Putin doesn't play games. So that just reminds me, you might seriously make sure you got an EMP shield, at least for your vehicle. Yeah, see, it cut, cut me out again. But anyway. Uh, we'll try to get we'll try to get the link in the description tomorrow on the new video about this issue with Russia. I've got to sit down and really look at some of the information that I'm getting on this uh, and do a little cross-referencing on the issue of Russia and Ukraine and the situation, how that is really rapidly uh, beginning to spiral in a very bad direction. Anyway, Stephen Benoon here. Blessings to you all, and uh, you'll have a great day.